It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So let's talk about the first thing that I think can be a roadblock mm-hmm. that you need to work through is all learning, no action. That's right. And, uh, you know, I think, Brian, the thing that spurred this is, is someone made a comment to you, and I think you were offended at first, right? Well, it like, was it on hurt YouTube. Your it was on bit. YouTube. And I have the quote. I mean, and I will tell you, if we were better with technology, we'd actually have a screenshot of this, but we couldn't figure it out. So here's the quote, though, that at the time I wrote the show note. That sounded like a jab, but it, it was did really. It sound like a jab. It was, it was like, more wow. me being mad that I, I didn't write down the date and the name of the person that made the comment. So it's more on me, up. not Daniel. But quote, great. But every time, it's mostly the same content. So this guy was saying, hey, I love your show. I love what you're doing. But man, it just sounds like you keep saying the same thing over and over. Is that kind of the gist of it? Well, it is. And this is, I look, I felt at first, I was like, whoa, that's kind of mean. That kind of hurts. But then I was like, you know what? He's on to something. Mm-hmm. Because I have, every time I have listened to, and, and this is probably a great transition point to kind of talk about what is it that makes you have all learning, no action. Yeah, I think so. If you think about some uh, folks out there, what do these folks or what are these items, what are these issues have in common, right? Yep. Uh, okay, so first, there's this oh. guy, right? Uh, we all know who he is. Dave Ramsey, our, our favorite friendly neighbor. Uh Oh, oh, there's oh. this guy. There's a really... <laughs> Talking about hair issues. Always really, like, why did we take the sweatiest, hottest picture and me dressed up as Woody is, is what we went with. But keep going. Uh, there's also this guy. Clark uh, Howard. That's Clark Howard. He's a huge, huge, huge... Big uh, influence on this show back in the, uh, the original years. Uh, one of the most formative books in Brian Preston's life, you know, The Miller Next Door by Dr. Thomas Stan- Stanley and William Danko. Uh, the follow-up to that, the next Miller Next Door... Uh, by Thomas Stanley and uh, and his daughter, Dr. Sarah Stanley. Uh, Everyday Millionaires, another one of the Ramsey Solutions folks by Chris Hogan. And then Dale Carnegie's up. Oh, that one went away fast. <laughs> <laughs> you, took a, you took away poor Dale Carnegie. But it is, I will tell you, and this is what the comment, and, and we did all that because we, we wanted to show you all those influences, but I have had this ex- same experience that this listener who put the comment on YouTube is every time I listen to Dave Ramsey, after I've listened long enough, I know what he's going to say before he yep. says it. Clark Howard, if you listen to his show enough, you're going to know what he say, is going to say. You've probably, if you've listened to this show for the last 14 years, you know some of my stories. I mean, I got to believe when I'm talking to you on the phone as a client or as a prospect or even as a friend yep. and get to know me, Bo, you know all my stories. Absolutely. I mean, you even put them in the show notes sometimes. <laughs> Just tell them that one. You have that one all lined up. I mean, so it is going to be one of those things where – it, you're, it, you're going to notice it really is bound to happen that all the greats are preaching off of the same sheet That's music. Exactly because right. when you look at all those books, even like Good to Great, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, every time I read these books, even some of the Malcolm Gladwell stuff that I've, I've put down, I'm like, there it is again. Yep. There it is again. There, these are all benchmarks. Success has a proven track record and path forward. You just have, kind of have to recognize these things and then kind of come to peace with the fact that there's nothing new under the sun. That's exactly right. And so uh, obviously one part of bettering yourself and amplifying, speeding up your wealth building process is going out there and consuming, going out there and listening to what really uh, intelligent people or really well-thought people in whatever area you're looking for but at some point, you have to stop consuming. Yeah. At some point, you can't just keep listening more, reading more, hearing more, watching more. There has to be a balance where you actually take action to move forward. And Bo, you had, when we were talking about this in pre-show, I thought you had a great story that kind of tied into this. You talked about the journey you had as first when you took your first investments mm-hmm. Classes. Yep. You were a student in, in At investment. The University of Georgia. Yep. Then you got your CFA and what that led to, and then there was you working in the industry for a number of years. Walk us through what you've realized on all learning and no action. Yeah. So what I thought was really interesting, I took my very first investment course. This is one of the first years in my major at the University of Georgia, and I under I learned about stocks and bonds and price to earnings ratios and all this stuff, and I was like, you know what, I got this thing figured out. So. In that very first semester, I went out and bought a bunch of stocks because I had figured out how the stock market worked. Well, come to find out, I didn't know anything more than anyone else. It did not work out that great. So then I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go get even smarter. I just don't have enough education. So then I go get this CFA where I want to become a chartered financial analyst. It just means I go way deep on the investments. And instead of just figuring out how to go buy stocks, I was like, okay, I'm a CFA now. I'll go figure out these arbitrage option strategies, how to trade derivatives. And we started doing that just to kind of play around to see, try our hand at it. 
and it wasn't until I actually had uh, some 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 time behind me, right? So I had some some, season. some seasoning before I actually recognized how investments worked and how wealth building works and how portfolio construction works. All that book knowledge, all the tests that I passed, all the academia that I went through was much less valuable than actually getting into practice and doing it and seeing how money actually works in the real world. So if we're going to take this, because I want to provide some breakthrough action plans so people can actually use this plateau moment to figure out how they move in the, the, the step forward in a better direction, is if we have somebody exactly like you just explained, where you just consume, learn, consume, learn, but you just get build up all this knowledge where does the action come in? Let's kind of talk about what we can do. And here's some th actionable things you can do. The first thing we talked about was take inventory of what you have and where you want to be. That's exactly right. You know, we think about all, all the times, uh, or we, we forget to remember all the time of the things that we do have at our disposal, the positives that we do have, the talents and passions that we do have. And if you don't think about what those things are, and ultimately where you want to be, then there's a chance you're going to miss it. Now, there's a fantastic saying all, that we hear all the time, right? It's, uh, ignorance is bliss, right? Yeah. So I think if you were going to take the opposite of that, uh, that the lack of ignorance or knowledge would not be bliss. Well, one of the things that I have found is that the more that we learn, the more educated we become, we allow these thoughts to creep into our mind. And mm -hmm. we have a good friend here in Nashville, and he kind of framed it this way. We have these things called limiting beliefs, these these. This voice in our head tells us these things that aren't possible, we can't get through, can't make sense of. And it's not until you start recognizing those things that you can actually start turning them around to use them as positives. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it. We did a show this morning that, was, that talked about how the well has been poisoned for a lot of young people on the power of investing, saving, and that they t have been told that wealth is given to you or passed down, not actually created. Yep. I mean, that's a limiting belief. That's exactly right. And it's, I think a lot of people, it's the same way when you're trying to figure out how do you recognize a problem? How do you figure out the path forward? You have to really train your brain to, to do these things so you understand what am I dissatisfied with? What's the path, for, path forward? And then recognize what's causing you these things that are holding you up. And what's in your control and not in your control. It's just like if you have the, the uh, limiting belief, you know, maybe I'm... I'm too old for my portfolio to actually continue making. I would reframe that to a truth that's, no, I still have a lot of years where yeah. I can let this money work for me. I can get it working. Uh, you talked about it. You know, if, if you're someone who's unhappy with stock returns, right? Yeah. You're unhappy with what the market's doing, but you're just investing purely in indexes, that might be something that's out of your control, right? Yeah. You, that's not something you do have the power to influence. But there are definitely other things. You can work on the asset allocation. Exactly you can right. work on how much you're saving. You can work on when your goals are to retire. And that's what that leads to the next thing I had was write down three actionable steps that you can take over the next quarter to make things change. To actually make apply some of this knowledge you've been building up for years. Let's base this because you don't eat the elephant all at once. You eat the elephant one bite at a time. I know that's a gross analogy, but it's it's appropriate in a lot of ways. Is because sometimes you do approach tasks that are very big, mm -hmm. and you know this whole thing towards financial independence. You know, and I, I bring back the Chris Hogan stat that I, when I read Everyday Millionaires, and you figure out that the average millionaire actually happens in their late forties. It's not the stories that you see from the old school lifestyles of the rich and famous or MTV cribs where people are becoming millionaires in their 20s and in their 30s. There's actually an entire process. So you've got to figure out. So it's a journey. It's yep, a marathon. That's right. What are the three things you can do this quarter to evaluate and measure and make sure you're actually making positive steps in your financial life. And I think what people get so caught up in so often is they think these steps have to be huge steps. Yeah. What are these gigantic leaps? No, it might just be, you know what? I'm going to pay off my credit card in full this month. If that's Or, you know what? I'm going to increase my 401k contribution to 5% this month. It's small, tiny steps that you can take that over a an entire working cycle can compound to have a huge impact on your financial and the, life. the money guy order of operations is probably a great place for you yeah, to start. If you're right. trying to figure out how do I figure out what the next thing I should do in the next three months. And the good thing is after you make it past the cash reserves or the $1,000, you can keep ticking through the checklist until you get through the entire order of operations. Last thing before I kind of transition off of this, dreams do not become a reality without a plan. So yep. you've got to make sure you're recording these actionable steps. This is the last point before we move on to the next thing. Are you uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. I ask this with all seriousness because I think a lot of times people, when you're going to have action that is going to change you significantly, it's no. I'm going to bring it back to the analogy of working out. Right. 
Bo, we have had so many conversations. Why do people, like I was even having this with my trainer, everybody skips leg day. Mm Mm-hmm. Why does everybody skip like Because nobody wants to be sore the next day. Everybody wants to have muscular legs and look good and you know when they're walking around, but nobody likes to exercise your legs because it's one of the harder muscles that actually it's just it's not fun right. to exercise that. So the question when I ask people, are you uncomfortable? It's kind of that way financially mm-hmm. too. If you have big dreams on what you want to do both financially or in your job, in your career, if somebody says no, they're not comfortable they're not uncomfortable. I would probably tell you, unfortunately, you're probably doing it wrong. That's right. And and this is one of those things, especially when you're in your 20s, 30s, and even early 40s, you probably are going to have some periods where it's just not fun all yep. the time because you have to put in you know some dues. You have to figure out how you do the 10,000 hours to become an expert. There's going to be a lot of things that do make you, that kind of challenge you. Challenge is good because it does make you stronger, fitter, and better. There's there's a lot of analogies here with clean eating, the exercising, and also good money management skills. You know, it's so cliche, but the saying, you know, it's you know, if uh, if you want something you've never had, you got to do something you've never done. You have to be careful of just getting, especially you know, a lot of folks. We'll see this all the time. They'll start out and they'll get their state documents done, and that's great. And they'll go out and get their employer matched on, that's great. But then they don't do anything for the rest yep. of their 20s, rest of their 30s, into their 40s. You have to make sure that you are continually keep yourself uncomfortable, and your later self will 100% thank you for it.